All right, we are off. This is the Manish Cap Randomizer Weekly Race. We're playing under standard race settings, which is going to be Open Fusions, Rupee Mania, Traps on. As you can already see, we got a trap. Uh, obscure uh, locations are available. Damaging items are seen as weapons. And we have the four sword and four elements required for the pedestal. Finishing on body. All standard stuff. Today we got a uh, good cast uh, crew on today of racers. We got me, Nesmin, Artemis, and Luna. Good luck and have fun to everyone involved. So far, pretty interesting start. Dog food, grip ring, and a wallet. And a a scroll. Beam sword is interesting. And boots potentially in the shop. On the 300. So if I get if I get a lot of rupees, we can uh by the boots, potentially. There's a start. Everything else so far hasn't been too interesting. Thanks for the uh, good luck, Riley. I appreciate it. Something's got to give pretty soon, right? Got to get something to get out of this uh, beginning sphere. Yo, Ozalot, thanks for the good luck. Are we just going to get, like, one rupee at a time? Is that all we're going to do right now? Here, let's get 300 rupees, but you'll get them one rupee at a time. Or five rupees at a time. No, we, we absolutely have to get something out of these next couple checks. 200 rupees? Okay, there's... There's our way of getting the boots. We need three more rupees. Obviously, at this point, like, it's gotta be boots, right? Unless this has something else. Yeah, okay. So we're buying the boots. We're buying the boots and then coming straight back up here. Because it's the only thing that boots unlock. Is there a rando with kinstone fusions required for extra pain? Uh, no, there's no setting that requires kinstone fusions. Like, you can turn them on, but there's going to be nothing locked behind them. It's all going to be like quality of life or just nothing major, like rupees and stuff. I think at some point they'll probably try and put in a setting that has fusions in logic, but they have to rewrite the logic for that. Which they've been working on. Uh, it's been taking a little bit of time, but they are rewriting the entire logic so that they can start doing some more 
interesting things. There's a sword! Okay. That is a start. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just immediately going to the puddle, right? There's nothing you want to do other than the puddle right away. Gets us a bomb bag. That gets us a spin. Yeah, some good stuff there. Gladly take that. In fact, I probably should have... I probably should have checked the dojo in town first before coming here, since we now have a bomb bag. You know what? I'll do that right now. This is a good time to do it. I also start, should check the map, just to see what dungeons are going to be required. Okay, no droplets and no fortress. Very interesting combination there. Because we're still going to want to go into droplets, guaranteed. Like, I will put money on that. That Droplets is going to have something. The Fortress? That's always a good... That's a, that's a good one to not have to do. But at the same time, Fortress has a lot of stuff. So once again, that's one that we're probably going to want to go to at some point. Unless we don't get the Kinstones. It's going to come down to Kinstones, I think. Not having to get the Swamp Kinstones is going to be very useful. Bottle? Okay. Assume it's real bottle. We could be looking at Krennel. Actually, we are looking at Krennel, right? With spin, bombs, b bottle. That's just telling me, go Krennel. Especially with Grip Ring as well, ooh. Hold on, this is getting really spicy. If we find Kane, then this gets even crazier. But I think most likely we're, we're looking at just Krennel checks in general. Which I'm fine with. As long as I don't have to do vanilla Cave of Flames path. Which we currently... We currently don't... Uh, do we have a way? We have Beam Sword, right? I think technically Beam Sword would work. Or am I missing something? Probably missing something. Power bracelets over there? Okay. <laughs> so 
So I'm just gonna make my way over to Krennel. There's really nothing else I want to do at this point. Gus Char is not technically required. The only thing is that one room on the way to the like normal path. Where you have to either gust the the pot, or you have to to break the pot with some way. I'm pretty sure a beam sword works. I know light arrows work, but I think beam sword works. I don't need more rupees. Uh, we've already determined that the 600 is nothing. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up, do Upper Krennel, and bank on not having to do the vanilla route. So I'm just going to set up all the upper stuff. And then we'll come back and do lower after if we still don't find anything. This is probably the wrong order of operations, but because we got Grip Ring, that leads me to be inclined to come up here first. Like, having Grip Ring and everything that leads us up Krennel tells me, okay, we probably want to do Upper Krennel more than Lower Krennel. Lower may be the, the correct play here, but... We're gonna we're gonna play it this way. Yo, what's up, Snow? Thanks for the good luck. Shield. That is an item. That is an item that gets me a couple checks as well. Of course. The one check it gets me on Kretel is in a weird spot from here. I think we want to follow that, unless we get something good here. Flippers. Okay, flippers are good. That's a big item to find. That gives me a lot to do in town. As well as, like, in general areas. And that puts me one step closer to Lake Hylia. So yeah, before I leave, I definitely want to check the, uh, the scrub here. Because I'm going to follow the flippers, and I'm also going to follow the shield. Thankfully, one of the shield items is right here, so we can grab it right away. The other one is right outside of uh, Colonel. So we're going to take care of both of those right away, pretty much. Okay. So that wasn't anything. Let's see if this one is. Both were single rupees. That's great. I love it.
So shield was nothing. But now we're going to follow our flippers. Because I feel like flippers are probably the progression we're looking at here. Because that required the grip ring. So that was basically everything that we were leading up to, right? Of course, a Swamp Stone. thought of like something really interesting we can get one item check in Bale Falls it's a pizza heart which I'll take you can also see there is a fake boots in lower along with the scroll could be a good scroll. It uh, looks like a uh, swift blade scroll, so it's probably something very useful. Like it's probably going to be a, a spin scroll or like a rock breaker or something. Down thrust. Butterfly? Okay. Not gonna complain about Butterfly. That's a good one to find. Of course, we don't have the bow yet, but it will be good once we have the bow. big play that I, I think I'm going to be making here is just doing minish checks in town. I don't think a lot of people like would do these right now. They'd probably want to wait for a cane. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to head back over to um, Minish Woods. There's Caves by Bellari, which are flipper locked, as well as uh, the north part of Minish Woods that leads towards Lake Hylia. But I'll probably end with that just in case. Uh, that leads us into Lake Hylia. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I go... The well. The other thing I could do is I could go into the fountain. Uh, don't really want to go into the fountain. This fountain has one item for me right now. But it is a possibility. Oh, yeah. 
with this uh, setup, we have access. We have access into Deepwood. Can't guarantee that we can make any progress in Deepwood, but we have access. I'm curious if I should go in there. Maybe set up a safe scum beforehand? Unless I find the Gushar or um, a Lantern in one of these checks here. Yeah, I'm gonna set up a save scum. Let's just see if we have any actual progress in Deepwood. Like, if we can actually get in there. Because chances are we can just get one item and leave, right? Actually, even without a save scum, this kind of works out routing-wise, because it's going to put us in a good spot to go up to North Minish Woods. This is a small key, so we are going to make some progress in here. The only way this really backfires on me is if Lower Krennel had the Gush Jar. If there was a Gush Jar on Lower Krennel, we would have been able to uh, just full clear this dungeon, coming in here once. But now we're almost guaranteed to have to do this twice. Unless we do find Gush Shard in here, which is a possibility. So hopefully something is back here, because that'll uh, that'll really help me out. It'll help me out a lot if we find some progression here.
Alright, so we know the last key's over here. So I am gonna fight the uh, matter pillar. Maybe we get a vanilla gush jar. Imagine that. Having to use the, the key here to get the, the vanilla gush jar. No. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the heart piece and then we're out of here. Didn't really find much in here, but we made some good progress. We had to go pretty deep in anyway to get the boss key. So I'm, I'm fine with the progress that we made. Single rupees everywhere. It's looking very much like we have to go back to Lower Grenel. Or we do uh, chickens. Hanlon key. That's it. That's our progression. That's the progression we needed. Actually having the Lon Lon key so we can go through the house. And the fact that we now have access to Lake Hylia is going to give us so much. Because Droplets is a gold mine. Especially if you have flippers. Now if I had... If I had... Um... Gush jar or cape? Two swamp stones already. You know what that means. It means we're guaranteed. Bow! Okay, I'll take bow. That means we're probably gonna have to go to fortress at some point. But yeah, uh, what I was gonna say, like, if we had. Cape or the Gush Jar, we can get access to the second waterfall, and that gives us a lot more items to get. But I'm perfectly fine with getting up to first waterfall in Droplets for now. I'm also going to grab these items before going in, just in case we find a lantern. the chances of us actually finding anything useful probably pretty low
the mitts, though. Ooh, wait a second. That is a useful item. That's a very useful item. Especially in these settings. Hold on. Now I'm, I'm immediately going after these mischecks. Cloudstone required, okay. I'm gonna come back here and grab things. I probably should have saved that one for later. Like, now I'm, like, really thinking about it. Because I'm probably just going to leave and go down to Minish Woods. Because there's another, uh, good mitch check over there. But yeah, we're probably going to want to follow the mitts. That's really nice to find. Another heart piece. We're just getting lots and lots of heart pieces, aren't we? There's the Gush Jar. Ooh, that's a good spot to find the Gush Jar, too. And the Dig Butterfly. That's actually really good to find the Gush Jar there. Because now I can go straight over here. Yeah, now... Now I think we just go back and finish Deepwood. We run back to, uh... Minish Woods, we finish Deepwood. Alright, this dungeon is, like, completely... Uh, Lantern Locked. Because we only got one small key. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna do anything else here unless we get lantern and we have like nowhere else to go. But now we've got got some things to do. Actually, I'm going to go out this way, because there is a pretty solid check right here. Pretty quick one to grab. Okay. In terms of items in deep, deep wood here, we're still missing the map. We know where that last small key is. So there is map, small key, two items. And the lantern was locked! <laughs> <laughs> okay, game. Okay, game. I 
I see how it is. So, um... Back to droplets? No, we're, we're not going back to droplets yet. No, are we? Droplets isn't, like, a great place anymore. We got most of the good stuff there. Yeah, the flippers got us... No, it was uh, the Lon Lon key that really got us the Gus Jar. We needed the Lon Lon key. We needed flippers to get the Lon Lon key to get the Gus Jar to get the Lantern. Alright, either this is map or it's an item. And we're done here. It's an item. Perfect. We're out. This is one of the few seeds where Vlamon Key really came into play. Like, that opened up all of Lake, Lake Hylia for us, which got us the Gust Jar, which then allowed us to go back to Deep Wood to finish that up. I'm gonna try following a combination of the Gust Jar and the Lantern right now. Like, there's a few Gust Jar checks, there's a few Lantern checks that I want to grab. And then I'm probably going to just start slowly making my way to Krennel again. Unless I find something else. Uh, Mitz checks as well. We want to check Mitz stuff. I forgot to check the Mitz check. I forgot to check the mist check in uh, Minish Woods. I mean, this one's not too far out of the way. So, as long as I remembered it when I did. Yeah. Of course, nothing there. Alright, so we're going to grab the Town Mitz checks. We'll start heading back up north. There's some Mitz checks. There's uh, the Lantern check in Courtyard. Lots of little things that we can do.
Now, obviously, like, Lantern is the latest progression, but we just recently got Mitz, and we recently got Gus Shark. Like, those things are still, like, kind of fresh. Mitz unlock a lot of things, so I just want to check a lot of Mitz checks in general. If I can get access to Upper Vale Falls, then we can get a lot of things. So if I find Vale Falls Kinstone, uh, we're going to be swimming in items. But it's not very likely to find that. I mean, it's possible, but... We've got other things to find as well. We still haven't found any other swords. It's kind of surprising. Okay, now that changes, like, everything, right? Having the ocarina means I just want to go... I will go up to Cave of Flames. For sure. But I'm also going to go ahead and do, like, all of these checks in Lower Crunnel now. Just in case I missed something earlier on. Having the Gush Jar means I don't have to waste as many bombs as well, which is always good. But yeah, vanilla route up to Cave of Flames is probably what we need to do. And I probably shouldn't even waste my time doing these. But they're quick, so I'm not too worried about it. There's a sword here, so it's a good thing I came here. Now, I won't be surprised if we end up running into uh, a double sword situation where now there's going to be a sword in Cave of Flames and we just have to leave like part of the way through. Also getting very close to Waveblade. Alright, we just go for it. Because we got the ocarina, I'm not worried about going this way.
And this has a lot of checks because we get access to Molari's mines as well as uh, the Hermit Cave up here along the way. Then we get access to Cave of Flames. Like this is very good value. Okay, nothing there. The only thing I didn't like is having to uh, climb up the wall twice, but it is what it is, right? Like, we, we climbed up the wall once, that got us the flippers, and now the second time we're making our way to Cave of Flames. You know, one quality of life thing that could potentially be useful is having these boulders already pushed. Like, that would definitely speed up the path that it takes <laughs> to go all the way to Game of Flames just a little bit, just enough to make it even more worth it. Because as it is already, it's a very long journey to Cave of Flames. So if we didn't have to do all these like boulder puzzles, it would make things a little bit better. Like this one here. Another one. Like all it does is just waste time. Just put it in the hole and uh, let us go on our way. I haven't done uh, Malari's Mines this way before, so I have to, like, try and figure out <laughs> where the spots are coming from this side. Because I'm used to it the other way around. Pretty sure the first one's, like, right here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There or oh, it's it's like right here, I think. Yeah, Cloudstone. Okay. All 
Oh, that, that actually was a bomb. Okay. I was like, that's not the item. But it was. Alright. So we made it to uh, Cape Flames. So I am fully expecting something in here. Probably a sword. That is my, like, guess for the item we're gonna find in here. We may even find the cane in here, right? If we find cane in here, we can complete the dungeon. If not, I think Wave Blade, maybe? Because we are out up to the 10 hearts now. And we got that 10th heart by coming up here. So this could work out. Though we were very close, even before coming up here. Like, I want to say maybe, like, one more piece of heart we probably would have had it. Which we may very well get from, like, Liberari or something. Like, there are a few other checks out there that we can do. Is that a wallet or a trap? I don't know. Doesn't matter. We're not grabbing it. We don't need it. Because the 600 item is garbage, so we don't need any more wallets. So there's no point in even, like, testing to see if it's a trap or not. I have access to what? One more check? That's it. But we're gonna get the... Oh, we don't even get the portal. Right? Without the cane, you don't get the mini-boss portal. That's unfortunate. Unless it's vanilla cane! It's a trap. Cool. All right, so we're out of here. That didn't lead me to anything, but... We at least got access to the dungeon, which is more than we had access to before.
So Lavari had a green ruby. Now let's go see. Does Wave Blade have our progression? The other possibility is Green Sword. No, no progression there. So yeah, now I'm looking at Town. We've got Green Sword, we've got a few other miscellaneous things. Simon, chickens, stuff like that. Put on. No, that's fine. Where'd you go? Where'd it go? How'd you get up there? <laughs> How did it get up there? Remote bombs. I mean, they're not bad. Nothing there. Looks like we're probably going into either Fountain or under the school. I think with the remote bombs, I'll go under the school first. Like that, that's gonna go by really quick now that we have remote bombs. else I could possibly do right now. I could go into droplets again. Yeah, I could go back into droplets. committed to going to Fountain, so let's do it. And then we go to Droplets, right? There's a Kinstone! There's a Kinstone that's cape-locked in here. This is the seed that just keeps on giving.
We're just doing, like, everything wrong. And it doesn't even matter. Because <laughs> we're still going to have to do things again. That bonk off the wall into the pit was amazing. 10 out of 10. This is almost like a situation where I want to... <laughs> I want to just do Blue Chew while I'm here. There's not many things I can get right now. No. Let's let's go down here first. I think let's go through Dark Maze. If we still don't have progression at that point, something's wrong, right? And that something is, we gotta do Blue Chew. Red Sword on Blue Chew is going to be like the ultimate thing here. There's our fourth key. So now everything is technically accessible. Including Blue Chew. Oh yeah, I don't have a uh, cape, so I can't, I can't go up that side. And there was nothing there! How lovely. there either. It's going to be on Blue Chew, isn't it?
because I'm, I'm just trying to think, is there anything else that I could possibly get? And I can't think of anything outside of this dungeon. So progression has to show up in here. And it's either going to be on this side with the lily pad, or it's going to be on the other side, and the only thing on the other side is blue juke. At least over here there's a couple checks, so I'm doing this first. Just for the chance of, you know, getting a few things. here? The cape was here. Okay. Well, that gets me that kinstone in Fountain, which is probably going to be the Vale Falls kinstone. Hold on. I'm going to go ahead and get Blue Warp Bomb here. Just in case I need to come back here. At this point, I probably shouldn't have to come back here, but... There's still Octo, there's still Blue Chew. Alright, so the first thing I'm doing before even, like, thinking about going anywhere else is we are immediately going in here. The second thing is probably going back to Fountain. Chances of that being a required kinstone right now. Is one out of five? Or no, four out of five. One out of five that it's the swamp stone. So I'll take those odds on that kinstone being required. It may even be Veil vale Falls, which gets us access to a million other things. So it's going to be a good potential.
And then also, when I'm in town, I can grab the bell. There's another check for the dojo. So we got a lot of good things to check. On top of, you know, going back into Fountain. Because this cave is opening up a few things here and there, but it's not opening up a ton. So I fully expect that Kinstone to be our progression. Which means it's going to be the Falls Kinstone. Expected. Veil Falls Kinstone. So it is a good thing that I went into the fountain uh, when I did. Because then I was able to see that there was a Kinstone there. I pretty much figured out that it had to be Veil Falls Kinstone based on progression once we got the cape. So now coming up here, we're going to get, like, a bajillion and a half things, right? Like the red sword. Okay. So we get red sword. Now I'm just going to go straight to uh, Caster, I think. After after I go into Cloud Tops. I'm going to go into Cloud Tops because we have Cape and um, Mitts and we have to go there eventually. So I might as well clean it out. Uh, just see what kind of uh, stuff is in there. And because I have Ocarina, like it helps me get out of there really quickly. I only have two, so I'll put them on the left side. Rock Breaker's nice. Gladly take that.
another scroll? Okay. Just keep them coming. Some more health. Lots of stuff up here. Nothing like major, but lots of stuff. And watch, as soon as we go into Western Woods, this seat's just gonna go get broken wide open, right? Another heart container. So we're not gonna have to worry about health at all. Like, at all. Oh no. Oh no. It's the final swamp stone. And we have access to swamp. So that tells me we're going to fortress. Yeah, so we're going to Fortress, probably. I mean, we're going to just be doing a lot of stuff in general. Between Fortress, between Caster, between Western Woods. Like, a whole lot of stuff coming up. Like, we have a whole corner of the map that we can access pretty much fully now. That's book number two? I don't really need any of that, so we're just gonna move on. So since we have the ocarina, we don't need to open up the shortcuts here. I'm just gonna go ahead and make my way through. Because we're just gonna get the caster warp point and that, that's all we need. So far, a whole load of nothing in Western Woods, besides some health and some rupees. Tangle Trophy? Not a thing. Okay, so Western Woods is pretty much a bust. But you know what? We're coming into Caster. Caster has a cloud stone, has the graveyard key, and the cane. Okay.
Like, what are the odds that, like, the three underwater items over there have three major things? It's pretty insane, I think. Could that be the real Tingle Trophy over there? Maybe. Guess we'll find out in just a few. I don't think I'm going to go to Fortress anymore. I'm going to go finish up Cave of Flames. Yeah, I think I finish up Cave of Flames. Real Tingle Trophy now, okay. I might even pass up on uh, hiking here. Just because we've got a lot of like other good stuff to do. Yeah, I think the fact that we got uh, the cane pretty much sets my sights squarely on Cave of Flames. I don't really want to be doing anything else right now. I can do Greyblade first. Yeah, Greyblade's not terrible. He's right out here anyway. Sword. Maybe I do. If this is a real sword, I go graveyard. It is a real sword, so I go graveyard here. Hundred percent. Since we're cursed, we might as well go in here. We gotta make our way through Cave of Flames eventually at some point. But now we're now we're looking pretty. We're what? A couple kinstones away and one sword away. concerns me the most right now is if there's like kinstones or sword in fortress because I don't want to go to fortress unless I absolutely have to at this point
So we're going to get our second and third elements pretty quickly here. Because we're going to get the second one here, and then we're going to go straight to the graveyard for the third one. After that... Well, I guess after that, we're probably heading over to, uh, to Fortress. But ideally, we want to go to Fortress looking for, like, one item. That way we can just leave after we find it and not have to worry about full clearing. I'm just going to put a fairy in a bottle just to be super duper safe. I don't expect to need it, but you never know. Ooh, okay. Dash attack's interesting. Let's go ahead and see what Malari has. Because you do get a check from Malari for beating Glee Rock. Now we go straight to the graveyard. There's no reason to do anything else right now. We just want to rush this next dungeon. Because we really just got access to all of this, right? This has potential to hide new things.
so far nothing, but uh, that's to be expected. The beginning part of Royal Valley doesn't really have much. It's the graveyard itself that uh, usually holds the goods. The other things to be thinking about here are blue sword checks. So because we just got access to the blue sword, uh, there is the pillar in town as well as the one check in Vale Falls. Kinstone. Kinstones are required at this point. So we are, what? One kinstone and a sword away. Unfortunately, we've already gone through Cloud Tops, so we know there's no Kinstones up there. So we just gotta figure out where it could be. Uh, the other thing we just got access to, as well as the blue sword, as, is going to be the cane. So it could be behind cane. Uh, there's the school in town. Uh, there's a few other things that we can grab that are cane locked. Lower Veil Falls specifically. So maybe I go back to town and do, like, the school stuff, as well as the, uh, the pillar. Because that seems like a decent play. I'll do pillar first, just in case it's four sword. Because then we can get the garden as well. But chances are we're not going to be able to do Garden. I'm sure there's probably something in Fortress, right? Fortress always loves to have an item. Whatever it may be. But before I go there, I just want to, like, get rid of some of, like, the easier checks around town area.
Alright, so from here, we're gonna go there. Unless we get the Kinstone. Yeah, let, let's just go straight to Fortress. Yo, Xenazor, thanks for the good luck. Seasons after this. Um, I don't know if I'll finish in time to do seasons. We still have a lot to do. Because we still have Palace, and we still have DHC. And we still haven't found everything we need. had to get right there. At least we were able to sneak right by him. I'm actually kind of curious what we're going to find in here. Because obviously if we find the Kinstone, we can go to, to the Palace. But if we find the Sword, we can't go to Palace. Well, there's all... <laughs> there's all of our uh, scrolls. Like, if we can't get to Palace, then maybe we have to go hiking? There's a few other things we can do. We can go into the library, do like Flipper Cave. We can go back. <laughs> go back into uh, Fountain again. For the full-on triple dip. Alright, this is Bosky. At least take that.
Nice. Yeah, this, this dungeon really doesn't have much, it seems like. isn't much left to get, so kind of makes sense. We're not going to find a million things, because there's only two things to find. I guess this Karlov metal as well. That's another thing that we could potentially find. And I could turn in uh, a few things, a few of the like trade items. Like the Tingle Trophy, I could do, I could do the Mushroom, stuff like that. I think before I go to the back of the dungeon, we want to check those out. Because those are really quick. And I think we just clean out the dungeon while we're here. I think we just gotta go for it. I think we have to do boss because of the key situation. I think I could probably get one item from the other side, but most likely we have to do boss for them. Thank you. 
So this gets me two items, so this is a very, very useful thing to do. One's a key. The other one is just an item. Okay. And now, now we can go back. So yeah, we just want to start on the right side because key logic. Like if we if we don't have a lot of keys, we want to be on the right side. So I guess technically, like, they'll probably put the stuff on the left side. There's just more checks on this side anyway, so it's worth doing. Alright, so that puts everything here in logic. There's the mirror shield, okay. At this point, if I don't find anything on the left side here, we just wasted a whole bunch of time. Yeah, there was nothing here, of course. Yo, what's up, Final Fox? Am I winning? Uh, probably not. Not after doing that entire dungeon for no reason.
then again, you know, maybe maybe someone else made that same exact play, right? There's not that many places left to check. How do you get into these? Uh, you just show up. As long as you're in the Discord and then on race time, you can, uh, you can join. Just be around or at the starting time and then be ready to race. Third book. Third book. Let's go, Yolari. Yeah, any anyone can join. It doesn't matter if you know what you're doing or not. Yeah, so we're going to do Yolari real quick. The fact that we just got third book from going through the library, that just tells me, like, we want to turn these books in right away. Then... Then I'm probably going to want to go do hiking. Hiking is like one of the few things that has a lot of checks left. Everything else is like a single check here and there. biggest demise might be obscure spots. You'll get used to them after you play with them a few times. It's not too bad. Most of them are just like underwater or digging spots. The hardest ones I always have trouble with are the ones in Malari's Mines. What's my favorite randomizer? Probably Oracle's rando. But that, that's the one I have the most experience in, so that probably makes make sense, right? Like, I have a feeling that we're just looking for the Kinstone, and Four Swords going to be a palace. It just seems that way right now, just based on how everything is going. Because we're cleaning out everything, pretty much.
Yeah, I'm playing on emulator. For the best experience uh, in races, you want to play on emulator. You want to play on BizHawk specifically, because that allows you for auto tracking. So I don't have to manually click on items on my tracker. When I'm playing on BizHawk, I can just uh, let it do its thing automatically. Which is really nice in this game specifically because there's just so many checks. Uh, four, let's go back to Fountain. Let's go back to Fountain. Triple dip Fountain. Let's go. Well, I can also do Dr. Left now. So I, I can at least get a second item while I go up there. But yeah, other than this, I don't have many things left. Karlov Metal? Hmm. It's probably behind Karlov Metal, isn't it? In fact, both things may end up being behind Karlov Metal. That's a very real possibility. Alright, there it is. Carl of Metal. What's in the house? There's the Clinstone, and are we gonna find our sword? No. Is there any randomizer I still kinda wanna get into at this point? Um, I'd be down to try a few other ones. I really want to try out Paper Mario Randomizer, but I'm really bad at the game. Like, I don't think I could do the, uh, the fights, like the later fights. I don't know. I feel like I, I would die a lot. But I, I really like Paper Mario as a, like a randomizer. It's a pretty cool game. The first one. I'd also like to try and get into some of the other Zelda randomizers. Like, I, I'd, I'd try out Majora's Mask randomizer at one point, right? Like, I'll, I'll give it a try. Yeah, I could go back to A Link to Past. It's been a, it's been a long enough time. I think we could uh, squeeze that out. Though, like, Zelda 1, Zelda 2, I tried them. They're not really my style of randomizer.
But I could see like Wind Waker. The Wind Waker is a little more intimidating because of like all the glitches and stuff that usually get used to help speed up the randomizer. But I have heard good things about uh, the way Wind Waker randomizer like shuts down certain dungeons completely. So you won't ha even have to dip into it. Yeah, there's Twilight Princess Rando as well. And Skyward Sword. I really want to try Skyward Sword at some point, but I, I just have to like get it set up. No, you can't make the seed unbeatable by not curing him. He will always just remain there. He doesn't die. So you're guaranteed to be able to get both items from him. Oh, the light arrows. Okay. And there are, there are a few, like, other games that I would like to try randomizers of. Um, I saw that there was a Banjo-Kazooie randomizer, but I'm not sure how, like, good that is. I feel like Banjo-Kazooie is very linear in progression, so... And, like, you need the moves in order to be able to make it further through the castle. So I don't know how that would work out. I like the way uh, DK64 Rana works. Yeah, Tui might work. Tui might be really good. Because it's more open. Either that or, like, have the warps available. Because Tui, you still do need some moves in order to access new areas. Would I try Wario Land 3? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm really a fan of, like, Mario randomizers. Or, like, Mario-style games as a randomizer. But then again, I haven't tried any of those. So I, I shouldn't knock it before I try it, right?
Where could the four sword be? It's got to be here somewhere, right? I think the fact that no one is finished so far tells you everything you need to know about the seed. Because this seed is just all over the place, right? It tries to give you some good stuff, and then it just puts everything in the worst possible spot. Like, we basically last location cape, and then we get, what, blue sword, cane, we got blue sword, cane, kinstone, like, whole bunch of stuff, back to back to back. And then we just go on another dry spell. Why do all the handheld Zelda games have amazing music? Uh, probably because Capcom helped make them. <laughs> Capcom always has really good music. Like all the Mega Man games have insane music. Marvel vs. Capcom has good music too. Like, Capcom in general, they, they know how to, to make music. Yeah, and the GBA has some good audio. Uh, we're probably gonna have to full clear this dungeon. Yep, we're gonna have to full clear the dungeon, because there's the four sword. Shout outs to putting the four sword in palace, like I expected. But putting it in the vanilla boss key spot. <laughs> yeah, we're in go mode, but we need keys. We're in key mode right now. We need three more small keys in order to beat the dungeon. There's one. And there's literally no way around it. We have to get every small key for this dungeon because of where the four sword was. That's two. One more. Give me one more key. Give it to me on the next check, please. The sooner we get it, the better, obviously. Someone can potentially finish soon if they didn't go to Fortress.
But the fact that I went to Fortress, full cleared Fortress, found absolutely nothing means I'm probably not going to win this. It was a piece of heart. Yeah. There's the key. Oh yeah, four sword and great spin and long spin and quick spin and fast split and all these scrolls just make Link insane. Like you want to fight me? <laughs> well, good luck. You're just going to have to fight a Beyblade. Alright, so Georg time. Once again, this, this fight should not be too bad. With four sword, down thrust, every little thing we have, we're just gonna destroy. Super Mega Ultra, great spin. Like, we can just spin all day and not care. The only thing we do have to care about are the the little balls. Because we don't want our clones to get killed. Because we need them for doing damage. But sometimes you don't even need clones. clones when you have down thrust. There we go. And that is going to be our last element. All we got left is uh, DHC, which should not be too hard. Assuming we get like a good boss key, like it won't be too bad. Yeah, I like having logic to the randomizer. It gives you, like, a sense of purpose. Like, a reason to go in certain directions versus, like, I'm just going to go and do whatever. And, like, you can kind of figure out what the next progression is going to be based on the logic. 
like how I was able to kind of deduce that the kinstone that was in Fountain that we saw earlier was probably going to be the Veil Falls kinstone as soon as I got that cape. Because the amount of things that Cape naturally unlocks isn't that high. So seeing something that is inherently Cape locked means, okay, we're going to need Cape to get to this item. And this item is probably going to give us something. And at that point, uh, the only thing that that could have done was give us access to Veil Falls. Yeah, sometimes logic can just be straight crazy. Like, it can expect you to do some of the most obscure things back to back to back. It's like, really? I have to do all of this just to get my next item? Like, even the, the logic earlier in the scene, right? Like, we we got access... What was it? We got flippers from the top of Krennel. Uh, we got to the top of Krennel because we got a bottle. Uh, because we already had the grip ring. So we were able to get those flippers, and then we were able to use those flippers to get access to the north of Minish Woods. And then in the Goron Cave, we ended up getting our Lombon Key, which gave us access to Lake Hylia. And then because we got access to Lake Hylia, we were able to get the Gust Jar, which was in Droplets. And then we were able to use the Gust Jar in Deepwood to get the Lantern, which then we were... <laughs> like, it's just a whole big back and forth, just logical chain. Uh, just keep keep it flowing, keep it going. In fact, we actually following the logic there. Yeah, following the logic there, we had to get the lantern in order to logically get the key because we needed keys. We didn't have any keys, I don't think, after uh, doing left side, or we had like one. Or something. I probably could have gotten cape on the first visit if I had a key. But I was like, ah, uh, you know what? I'm not gonna do it because everything here is technically locked by the lantern. And then the lantern we find right away. And then we get the, all the keys, which gives us access to the lily pad, which gives us access to the cape. And it just keeps going like that. Yeah, LADX doesn't have a, a tracker for the pocket rooster, uh, because the pocket rooster is relatively new. I don't think the tracker's been updated in uh, a little bit. That seems to happen with uh, some of these games. It's like the, pe the people that update the trackers aren't the same as the people that work on the randomizer. So if one person is like working on the randomizer, the person that does the tracker might not be around or even know that there's new changes. Like, that's, that's what happened with the Oracle tracker, too. Like, the person that was working on the tracker for Oracles uh, wasn't around for a while, so we never got Portal Shuffle. We never got some of these extra uh, things that were added in.
But thankfully there are some people that are working on some of those features now. So hopefully things will come out soon enough. And we can start using some of those new features and showing you all those new features on stream. Because part of what makes the tracker good is the fact that it shows the viewers what's going on and what we already have, what we've already done, uh, what we have access to. Uh, the limits of the pocket rooster, you just can't use it in dungeons. You can use it in caves, which makes it like super useful. Uh, in the overworld in general. keys! I love keys. What's my favorite 2D Zelda dungeon? There's so many good ones. Um, I mean, if we're going based on randomizer, I definitely like Jabu as like a randomizer dungeon. But if we're talking vanilla, it's been so long since I've like played some of these dungeons as a vanilla without like doing speedrun strats and whatnot. I always liked um, the concept of Eagle's Tower, but I really like it with speedrun strats. If it, if I had to do it without speedrun strats, I probably wouldn't like it as much. If we're tr talking like strictly casual, strictly casual play. I think one of the most fun ones is probably uh, would it be Fortress? No, I, I think I think Droplets is probably the, the most fun. I feel like in Droplets you get like a really good sense of scale and like it's really cool to like go back and forth between the, the two areas or you know you know never mind I mean on a casual level mermaid cave is probably the technically the best right it's probably Mermaid Cave.
Because there's no other dungeon like it. That's the thing that makes Mermaid Cave really good. It's got a very unique concept. Being able to use the past and the present to both interact with the same dungeon. And there's our first finisher, Nesmin finishing in first place with a 232.58. GG to him. There's our boss key, so we are heading into the body gauntlet as well. Relatively close race, all things considered. So everyone probably ran into like similar issues of having to like full clear everything. Yeah, there, there's a dungeon in uh, Skyward Sword that plays with time as well. That's the uh, Linnaeru Mining Facility. But, you know, specifically in 2D, like, you don't see anything else like that. I have to say, Linera Mining Facility is a really cool dungeon. Actually, all the Sky Resort dungeons are really cool. Ancient Cistern is probably like the top tier uh, 3D Zelda dungeon. <laughs> and like, I'm normally not like a big fan of water dungeons, right? But Ancient Cistern is by far like the best one. Like, water and ice dungeons are usually done very poorly. Or, like, they have a mechanic that really requires a lot of back and forth. Like, changing the water level. Or changing the currents in uh, Great Bay. It's just tedious, usually. Alright, that was a solid body too. Not going to complain about that. I mean, any time that I can exit body 2 without taking any damage uh, is a good time. I would <laughs> and, you know, getting like the 3 cycle perfectly as well. Not having to like reclone too much. I think of the mansion in Twilight Princess. Uh, yeah, it was good. It could have been a little bit better. I felt like it wasn't like... It didn't have much of a point to it. It just felt like it was there, you know? It definitely could have been a little bit better.
Yeah, it didn't have, like, a big gimmick like most of the other dungeons do, usually do. But then again, it wasn't supposed to, right? It's literally just the Yeti's home. You're just invading their house. Why would it have, like, a, a gimmick to it? All right, there we go. We took second place with an official time of 238.33. What a seed. That was uh, certainly something. Like, that was nearly 100%. Like, we missed out on a few things here and there, but for the most part, that was as close to 100% uh, seed as we could probably get. And look at that, we didn't get Red Sword until 113. War Sword at 211. Cape at 106.